Father. Hallelujah, God. Because you are worth it. You are worth yes, the you are. wait, Lord. Yes, what you, you have for us is worth the wait, God. Yes, yes. Help us to wait on you, Lord. Yes, Lord. We pray that you would have your way in these yes, moments in Jesus' name. Yes. That you would give us ears to hear, Hallelujah. hearts to understand, and a will to obey you, God. Yes. Father, this is all about you right now, Father. Yes. It's not about me, but it's about you. So I ask you right now to hide me. Hide me, God, so that nothing can be seen except you. Stand up in me, speak through me, and think with my mind till you get the glory. And you say and do what you want done, God. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I love that song. I just heard it for the first time this week. But it went right with what God has given me for today. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Sometimes you've got to be reminded to wait on the Lord. Yes. Amen. So we give him honor today. Yes. He's doing. He is God. Yes. He is God. Yes. Yes. He's yes. God and he is due honor. He's due respect. He is due glory. Yes. He is due it. Yes. He is due. Hallelujah. Amen. We give him all the glory. Amen. We keep nothing. Yes. We steal nothing for ourselves. Yes. Hallelujah. We want to give honor to our wonderful pastor, Reverend Dr. Cook. Yeah. He brought an awesome word already. Yeah. Amen. Awesome word already yeah. at Travelers Fellowship in Scadaway. I want to give honor to our preachers, amen. Yeah. And a little bit better. They're just so faithful, amen. I want to give honor to each and every one of you that thought it not robbery to be in the house today. Yes, Lord. Just thank you for being here. But I did come on business for the king today. Praise the Lord. I came about my father's business, so if you have your Bible, we're going to go to Genesis chapter 15, verse 1, and then put your finger over into Genesis 16 and verse 1. So that is Genesis 15, 1, and Genesis 16, 1. Amen. Amen. I'll be reading from the New International Version of the Word of the Lord. Amen. Genesis 15, 1, we're going to look at verses 1 through 6, and then 16, verses 1 through 4. Genesis 15, 1 through 6. Genesis 16, 1 through 4. <coughs> and the word of the Lord says, After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abram said, O sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless? And the one who will inherit my state is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, you have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. <clears throat> then the word of the Lord came to him and said, this man will not be your heir, mm -hmm. but a son coming from your own body will be your heir. Mm -hmm. He took him outside and says, look up at the heavens and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Mm -hmm. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. Mm -hmm. Abram believed the Lord. Yeah. And he credited it to him as righteousness. Chapter 16, verse 1 says, Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children. But she had an Egyptian maidservant named Hagar. So she said to Abram, The Lord has kept me from having children. Go sleep with my maidservant. Perhaps I can build a family through her. Abram agreed to do what Sarai said. So after Abram had been living in Canaan 10 years, Sarai, his wife, took her Egyptian maid servant, Hagar, and gave her to her husband to be his wife. He slept with Hagar, and she conceived. And when she knew she was pregnant, she began to despise her mistress. So ended the reading of the word of the Lord. Amen? Amen. So I just want to take a few minutes today, if the Lord says the same and uh, just talk to us from the subject of after the promise, wait on God for the blessing. After the promise, wait on God for the blessing. You ever had the Lord, you know, promise you something? <coughs> and you know that he did. I mean, we, we don't do too much prophecy that much anymore because it got to be, you know, kind of far from what God was saying and it began to be proper lying and telling folks stuff that they wanted to hear so that they would give them more money. So we really, we limit it now till we know that God has really spoken. Amen. 
and then we allow you know that to go forth, but not just any and everything, you know, backroom <coughs> profits. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about, but I came up in that era when they would just tell you anything mm -hmm. to get the money out your pocket. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so what I'm talking about when you have a real word from God, a real promise from God, and you know that he spoke it into your heart, into your spirit, and then you look up and it's just, it was years ago he said it didn't. And then it's years and years, and then you look and you say, well, Lord, did you, did you say it? Was, did, I, did I get it wrong? And then you look back at when you wrote it down, the date, the time, and where you was at when he said it. Y'all do that. Okay, but I, I've done that. I've done that, and I've waited, and I've waited on the Lord. And even just this week, I said, God, I know you said this to me. Well, and then he began to give me this word. So it is for me as much as it is for you, because I know it's for you. Amen. <laughs> that after you get something from God, a promise from God, a word from God, you got to wait on him for the blessing, for the fulfillment. Yes. Amen? Because yes. one thing I found out about God is that he will not allow us to help him keep his promises. Okay. Amen. He is the promisor, and he is the promise keeper. And when we try to help the Lord, we just mess up stuff. I don't know about you, but I have tried to help God and made a big mess out of everything. And then God got to come along and come around and fix our mess. Amen? And I know somebody thinking, but the Bible says we're co-laborers with Christ. Yes, we are co-laborers, but that means to work alongside, not in front of. Amen? Amen? Amen. See, we are not the promisers or the keepers. We are the obeyers yes. Yes. of his word and his Amen. will. Amen? Amen? Because it is in obeying that we become recipients of what he has already promised. Obedience puts us in line for the blessing. Because when we try to help, we end up doing our will instead of God's will. Amen? And we play right into the devil's plan and not God's plan. Amen? Because Pastor told us last week that there are two plans for your life. One of them is God's plan and one of them is the devil's plan. And you in one or the other.
invaded Sodom and Gomorrah and took all the people and their wealth back to their town. And so when Abram heard about that Lot and, his, Lot and his nephew was taken, the Bible says that he took all of his servants and he goes to rescue Lot and all those other people. And I said, my boy, he's like 80 plus years old at this time when this is happening. And that began to show me that age is no limit when you got the power of God on your side Amen. and there are people that need saving. Amen. Amen. People that need saving from the enemy and you got the means to do it, then that means that you need to be the rescuer. Amen. Amen. So it was after this amazing rescue that God shows up to Abram again and reiterates the promise that he had told him in his calling that was 10 years prior to this time. Because he called him when he's 75 and he told him to leave everything behind, follow him and go to this place that he would show him and he would bless him and he would use him to bless everybody else in the whole world that was ever going to come. I told you, we were still chosen too. We was not left out. Amen? Amen. So here's a footnote. No matter how long it's been, what God told you, I ain't talking about what the devil told you. I'm talking about what God told you and what God says will happen is going to happen. You don't have to worry about how long it's been if God said it in the first place. Amen. Amen. I ain't talking about my wishes that I put on God. I'm talking about what God to me. I ain't talking about what I asked God to do. I'm talking about what God said to me. So God says after this battle, the Lord says, don't be afraid, Abram. I am your shield and your very great reward. He just, you know, had won this battle with this violent enemy and then God is assuring him that he, God, is the reason why Abram won and he did not have to fear. Don't you love it? I love it because when God is your shield, you don't have to fear anyone or anything. And God says, I'm your shield and your reward. I'm your shield. I'm your ruler. I'm your defensive weapon against attacks. I'm like scales on the back of a crocodile that you can't get through. I am your shield. And God is our shield too. He don't just love Abram and protect him. He protects you and me too. I know he does it because I've seen the weapon form, but it did not cross Understanding. 
understanding of what it means for God to promise a blessing, we think it can only come about one way or within the parameters that we know and we understand. But God can do anything. So when Abram says, I ain't got kids, only servants, you know, he's saying, that's all I can see. That's all I know because I'm too old to have kids of my own. So God must be going to let this servant be the inheritor of all of my blessings. And then the word came back to him and said, this man will not be your heir. Yeah. Yeah. Now, he's like, okay, I ain't got no kids. I'm old. My wife's old. I got, you know, what? And, and you say this DNA even? Well, well what, what are you talking about? And then God says, uh, this kid going to come from your own body. You're going you gonna to make this kid. So, and, and what the Lord showed me with that is that sometimes, God's got to take time to correct our thinking. Yes, yes, yes. And, and sometimes we need to take time and let him correct our thinking because a lot of our thinking be stinking. Yes, yes, yes. And, and so that when we come to the end of our understanding or even to the end of the knowledge that we have about our own selves, God can still come in with another plan and another word to fix what's going on. Because you think what you think is going to happen based on your knowledge, that ain't necessarily what's going to happen. Yes, yes. Mm -mm, mm -mm. God says my word is not limited by your understanding. Mm -mm. It ain't limited by your thinking. The only limit on me is I am limitless. I ain't got no boundaries. And my ability, I can do whatever I want to do unless I don't want to do it. Innumerable. 
other, understanding is brought to a new place of belief because it was going to take a bigger, stronger, bigger, more broad belief in God and in the places that God was going to take him. So God had to, you know, give him a new place and a biggerness and a bigness and a largeness and a hugeness because, see, when God brings you to a new place of faith, he wants you to place it in him and not in ourselves or anything else because we need to give it all to God so that we can do what he said we can do. Because, see, we like to trust God as far as we think we need God. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And then, you know, then, okay, I'm good now, Lord. You know, uh -huh. But we need God in every aspect of our lives. And God will let you figure out that you cannot do without him the thing that he told you to do. You can't. And the one way that he does that is that he ensures that the thing that he told you to do is so big, you, you, you just ain't got what it takes. You're too old, you unskilled, you can't handle it no more, you, you're too young, you uneducated, you're too poor, you ain't got no money, you ain't got no help. God gives you something so big, you go, Lord, have mercy. If this get done, it's going to have to be gone. Amen? Because God doesn't want you to think you can do it in your own strength. And so we recognize that the promise of God is going to be accomplished, then he's the one that's going to have to do it. That's right. But you and I, our responsibility is to believe him. Amen. It says, Abram believed the Lord. Amen. And he credited it to him as righteous. Abram believed God and that put him in right standing. You cannot be in right standing with God if you don't believe him. Well, I don't believe that. That's too fantastic. That must be a man. I don't believe no God. I ain't sure I believe in God anyway. Well, then go ahead on with your crazy self. You want to go ahead? Go ahead. You think all this just showed up from start up from the leave up in the that take more faith than believing that than the divine creator who made this thing happen. Stop believing this mess of the devil preaching. I'm sorry. But he always want to do God things and, you know, be God. And God will let us try, and then we come crying back to him and he missed. But you know, the faith that it took for Abram to believe God when he was 75 in the first place is the same faith he's going to need and more to believe God for this second thing now. So now Abram knows, because God said it, that God's going to allow him to have a child. You know, that's God, 85. And so he runs home and tells Sarai what God said, and they both overjoyed because they've been waiting on God forever. I mean, goodness. She, he 85, she what? There you go. She's 10 years younger. You can bury her. Anyway, <laughs> um, God told him that. He believes God. He just goes on living. He's doing his thing. He loves God faithfully, getting busy with Sarai. And you know, because God getting ready to uh, fulfill his promises. So Y'all know what I'm talking about. So I'm trying to act like you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> And then suddenly, this month later, and Sarah E is getting a little white, and she's like, uh, what happened? No, nothing happened here. What's going on, Jesus? You know, you know how you do. I know you say that, but hey, that was two years now. It's five years now. Woo! Okay. You know. So, you know, nothing happened, and, and, and she knew that God told Abram that he was going to have a baby coming from his body. So, Something else is happening because she is not pregnant, and so she figured that it must be time to help God out. Oh, yeah. well, Lord. You gonna help God keep his promise? I don't think so. So anyway, that brings us to chapter 16, and you know, it says that she didn't have no kids, that's what it said, and so she figured the Lord must have been somebody other than her, and so, you know, that's gonna give Abram this child, so she start plotting her on how to get a kid for him because it's important to her too that Abram has a legal heir. Amen? Amen. And, 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 and she said, you know, hey, I didn't fulfill my purpose. I didn't have no baby as if her only purpose was to have babies. So, God got bigger for you than just having babies. There's more for you. She's going to be the mother of faith just like Abraham going to be the father of faith. There's more for her too. Amen? Amen. So don't get
ain't letting me hang. <laughs> no, you just rich as rich, you know, less and less. But you ain't got nothing. Because you ain't got the, just that one thing that you want. Amen. Amen. <laughs> You've never been there. Right? <laughs> I'm just blessed, blessed, blessed. But how about this, dog? So what about, but when you go like, like you're all grateful? <laughs> you know. Anyway, she uh, catches this plan that uh, she's going to help out with God. And uh, she says, you know, he didn't let me have no kids, and he didn't even include me in the original blessing because I ain't had no kids, so I need to get an alternate plan for this thing. Uh, wow. yeah. Let me give you a footnote right here. Uh -huh. Be careful of alternate plans. Yeah. Yeah. Be careful of the alternatives. Oh, yeah. you, know, and, you know, and your back door, and your, if this don't work out, then I'm going to do that. My, this is plan A, but in case plan A don't work, then I got a plan B. God don't need your plan B. <laughs> Amen? And, and just because he might be bringing you the long way around, it is still his purpose that he's going to fulfill. And sometimes when you're just all anxious and tired of waiting, you need to ask God what to do. Amen? Go back to the God who promised you in the first place. And see, is he still going to do it? Is you still able, God, even though that's him? Yeah. Can you still do it even though, you know? And I wonder because in all of Abram's wandering all around and building altars and calling on the Lord and praying, I just wonder why he didn't consult the Lord.
pregnant, she began to despise. She began to devalue. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. She began to lower in her eyes mm -hmm. her mistress, her boss, her supervisor, okay. the real wife of Abram, okay. the one who allowed her to sleep with her husband okay. because she was so desperate to, for a child. Let me just give you a footnote right here. Don't be driven by desperation yes. to get what God has already promised to give you. For women, you know, if God promises you something, don't be doing it, you know, uh-uh. Mm -hmm. It goes for men yes. as well. Yes. You ain't got to connive yes. to get what God got for you. Right. Don't get fooled into doing what God don't want you to do because you're trying to get what you want. Because yeah. I yeah. am just positive that if Sarah he knew how Hagar was going to act, <laughs> She would have never gave her no access to her husband. <laughs> she didn't have no idea that Hagar was going to get all beside herself when she got pregnant. She thought that Hagar was going to remain her servant self and just have a baby for her. Mm -hmm. But that was not the case. The okay. child Hagar began to bone her pregnancy. <laughs> You know, you know, your pregnant, it's got a little bit. Hey, you see, I got a little bug. You know, he's you know, like, ooh. You, what about you? You got, no, oh, you got, oh. Okay, but well, now look, you know, ooh, you know, no, okay. And I mean, I think she thought that, you know, she, the second wife who had done what the first wife couldn't do, that her stock would be growing in Abram's eyes. So she was wrong. Well, because the record bears me out here, Pastor. To Abram, she was never his wife. Amen. Amen. To Abram, she was always Sarai's servant. Right. And I know because when Sarai got so sick of her, he said, do what you want to do because she your servant. Do whatever you want to do. She never, he never said, leave my wife alone. She carried my baby. Right. She was never a wife to him in his eyes. Side chicks. Oh, I'm good, I got an heir, I'm done, I'm good. 
haven't changed you, you better forget it. You'll never fulfill your purpose if you don't want no changes and no transformations. Because that's what rebirth is. It's rebirth. Old birth won't do it. And I found out we got to change over and over and over. Because what God wants me to do next year, I got to get ready for it this year. So when we have a promise, wait for your change. Let God change your name. So we can be a Christian instead of a devil. Yes. When you got a promise, the only expectation of God for you to have is to know that he will keep his promises. You can't have an expectation about when or how, only that he will. And if he happens to give you a date like he did Abraham and Sarah, wait on it. Just wait for him. Because I dare say, God always wait till you done messed up and get to the end of yourself, and then he comes in. I said, well, why do you always wait till we finish messing up? Can you just tell us before we mess up? He said, yeah, I could. I said, well, why are you going? He said, because you don't ask me. Well, well. You don't ask God if it's okay for us to do the wrong thing. You know we do not ask God if it's all right for us to sleep around. Jesus Christ says, 